Okay, I think we can uh, get started. Hi everyone, I hope uh, you guys are doing well. Um, I'm Sam, one of the organizers of this meetup. Um, so we're doing a meetup uh, in this region after quite some time and maybe in some of the areas. Um, this is probably the first meetup. Uh, and since it's online, we have uh, people from all around the region um, joining us today. So welcome and thank you for joining. Um, so just a few things before we get started, because this is a meeting rather than a webinar, you can unmute yourself. Um, so, uh, but during the session, uh, please do mute yourself and uh, you can ask questions via the chat during the session. But um, after the session, if you do have any questions or want to discuss anything with the speaker or any of the attendees, you can unmute yourself. And we do encourage you to have those discussions. Um, and also, uh, we will be recording this uh, session and we'll be sending you the recording and the slides. And um, yeah, so today we have Sajid with us. He's a technical lead at WSO2 and he will be um, speaking about tools and techniques that you need uh, when uh, for streaming based integrations. Um, hi, Sajid. Thank you so much for uh, speaking at today's meetup. Um, I'll hand it right over to you. Thank you. Uh, Sajid, I think you're on mute. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, go ahead. I hope you all can hear me now. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Sam, uh, for the, the quick introduction. Um, so as uh, like uh, she explained, so today's session will be on tools and techniques uh, for streaming based integrations. So I'm um, Sajid, so yeah. Uh, so uh, if I like briefly describe uh, about my role at WSO2, so I'm part of the WSO2 Enterprise Integrated Team. Uh, my main uh, work area is on uh, streaming based integrations. Um, so, so the idea of this session is to share our experiences and our uh, the, the, the things that we have come across and uh, share our knowledge with you all while developing these tools as well as go and deploy out it in real production environments and the solutions we came up with for certain problems, etc. Um, yeah, so, so, so please feel free free to like uh, interrupt in middle and ask any questions. So I will uh, continue. Um, all right. So like before, like we dig deep into uh, uh, what uh, about the technical details, like let me briefly touch upon why this uh, streaming integration is becoming more and more popular. Uh, so I mean, uh, so now this is being recognized so, I mean, this streaming based integration pattern is like now being a hot topic. Uh, so there are a couple of reasons, uh, like several reasons that uh, we have uh, of the main <laughs> uh, reasons is that now a days, like the, 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 the many systems expose themselves as streams of events. So traditionally they used to you know write their outputs to a file or a db and then if they know uh, translate overnight to the consumers or like send it in mini batches or batches but now uh, people the systems tend to expose themselves as streams of events so that the the, the users we can uh, get to know about these business events or transactions in real time okay so going in hand in hand with that reason now uh, the second thing is like the availability of data in real, real time is crucial and critical for many use cases. I mean, a simplest example would be, I mean, when you are booking an app, uh, taxi in Uber, so you want to see the details about your booking and uh, is the taxi is about and how long it will take. That information you need to, you need that information in real time, right? Uh, even if it get like minutes late, that in, the value of that information is the uh, very is not is not valuable anymore. Um, so so therefore, like many modern applications, like require this uh, the, their data in real time. So therefore, they can provide with a very rich uh, an interactive experience to the end user. Okay. 
So I think this uh, the the third point that I would like to make is the event about the event driven system. So we know this event driven systems were there for a while, um, but then again after in like last uh, like I would say like four or five years, uh, mainly driven by the popularity of Kafka, these event driven systems are like becoming very popular. Now it's not only Kafka like if you get uh, 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 there are other alternatives such as. Uh, other alternatives such as uh, NATs and etc. So, so which uh, which lets people uh, build uh, event-driven systems uh, uh, in in a real production environment. Uh, so, one of the key reasons for the popularity of event-driven systems is that like they 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 are very extensible and scalable. So, if I briefly introduce what event-driven system is, okay, there's this event backbone to which components come and connect to. And then these components will fire events, uh, fire events, uh, hand over events to the broker, the event uh, to the event backbone, and which will be consumed by other components and react on, react based on that event. So that is a very brief and high level introduction to event driven system. Okay, the 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 last point that I would like to highlight is so it it patterns the resource usage. We talk about this flattening the resource the, the, the curve. So it's essentially the same thing, right? So so with streaming based integration and streaming based processing, you don't need to accumulate data into big chunks and then uh, allocate substantial amounts of uh, resources to compute them. Rather, what you can do is you can incrementally process data or the events as and when they occur and as and when they are available. So, so these uh, are some reasons why this streaming based integration is becoming increasingly popular and applicable and relevant in many uh, modern use cases. All right, so let's move on. So in a wake of this, uh, so uh, so if you look at the, the, the Gartner report uh, with the title choosing between data application and event set with integration styles, which was published in November 2019. They have identified by uh, that events. Uh, so uh, this, uh, let me read out this quote. So event-centric integration is re-emerging as an integration approach, driven driven by the popularity of event-driven architectures and streaming data platforms. So 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 this is like a like now a hot topic, and like uh, so even these analysts are also becoming aware of that. So so yeah. So that's about the rise and, and the importance of streaming based integration. Yeah. So now let's get a little more technical. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So um, streaming uh, integration systems. Right. Uh, so before uh, we go further, like uh, let me briefly introduce the, the, the analogy. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Let, okay. So, uh, so before, uh, like, um, uh, we like dig into the more details. So let's let me introduce the analogy, like very commonly used in uh, streaming based systems. But this is like I wouldn't say this. These are like de facto standards for these uh, these uh, concepts. But there can be other terminology used as well. But like more or less, uh, this is uh, these are the terms that is being used in 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 the industry. So so an event uh, we can describe as an event is a discrete unit of data which consists of one or more data fields. So meaning that an event is a self-sufficient uh, unit. So it will contain all the information that pertain to that event. I mean, uh, it won't uh, the event won't be like transmitted like uh, in two chunks or uh, in. Oh, yeah, in a chunk manner. So, event is a self sufficient unit. It will carry information about that particular business event or transaction and it will carry all the information. So, that is at transport level, it might, I mean, at TCP or uh, that uh, transport level, it might come in different chunks, but ultimately, when you get it to your stream processing engine, so it, it's, it's a single unit. So, it, you should, yeah, the, 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 the stream processor should be able to uh, uh, process that event. By uh, just looking at that event itself. Right. So then comes stream. 
So when you combine several streams together, and uh, I mean, uh, it, uh, several events together, we call it a stream. So a stream is essentially a continuous flow of events. Um, so uh, there are like several uh, char characteristics that you see in a stream. So often like streams carries large volumes of data. So that is uh, in, uh, I mean, if you measure it in uh, MB, so uh, GB, so I mean, you might be getting like a large volume, like right? even in some cases, you might get GB's volumes of data in a very short period of time. And also it can, so that is about the size of data. And then again, you can get data in very high velocities, meaning that the event itself might be small, but they, you might be getting millions of them right? uh, uh, for a uh, time unit. Uh, so that is not that uncommon in streaming systems. And the, 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 one of the key factors that contributes to make this uh, large volume and high velocity is that streams are often verbose. So, this, so the applications that emit or disseminate stream really, uh, most of the time are really verbose. They disseminate all the information and uh, sometimes very granular information, uh, which might not be directly relevant to the end user, but, so, but they tend to be verbose. Uh, so, yeah. uh, so that's about events and streams. And then we have sources. So sources are the entities which publish event streams or disseminate event stream and since or receivers are the entities which will consume the stream of events so i hope uh, so uh, we have established the the, the 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 terms that we are going to uh, use uh, in, to, in the rest of the the, the, the session right. so let's move on right so so when it so actually this scene, the, the term streaming integration is like very uh, an overloaded uh, term. So 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 uh, in context of uh, even brokers like Kafka, they use this streaming streaming integration to describe uh, actually uh, more or less about event driven systems. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, this the, the, the term. Uh, so as we see, the streaming integration is is more than like uh, it, it covers more uh, than the event brokering aspect itself. So 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 from a different perspective, uh, uh, we are trying to define. The, I mean, we are not trying to define uh, rather than defining. We are trying to describe what streaming integration is. So in most, uh, so the streaming based integrations can be broken up into two main parts. So one is like using streaming to integrate data and other one is using streaming based technologies for application integration type of uh, use cases right so this uh, so if we take a look at the, the, the uh, about the, the, the data integration side of it so we can again identify two types of integrations okay so the first one is quite straightforward right so there are as i explained earlier there are certain uh, uh, publishers who exposes themselves as streams. So what they do is they disseminate streams. For an example, an IoT sensor or a modern software application or a mobile app or a SaaS application that is hosted in Amazon or Azure. Or so, so, that, so these applications might be sending uh, publishing streams to the streaming system. So the, 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 the beauty of streaming system is pretty, quite easy in that uh, in that case, because it has to consume the stream and take it on from there for processing. Then the second case is where you have to source events or streams out of passive data sources. So, I mean, we can't deny the fact that, like, yeah, even, an, I mean, even still there are many applications or legacy applications or even the use case sometimes demands that data to be written into a DB or a file rather than being sent, right? So, so, so I mean, that, that, that will not go away. So still we need to incorporate that uh, such applications also into our streaming system. So what we, what we have to do there, so we have to source streams or generate streams out of these passive, uh, passive data stores. So once we, you do that, the stream is so so then 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 the 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 the, the, dude, the, the role of streaming system also includes not just consuming streams but here you have to generate a stream right so uh, so the, those are like two main problems that we have to 
to solve uh, the two things that we need to do when it comes to data integration based on stream. And then if you look at the application uh, integration side of it, so, so we can think of it as taking action. So, like uh, uh, an interesting occurrence, you need to process that, that data. So that's where you need stream processing. So, so uh, yeah, technologies like stream processing, you can like uh, drill these streams using stream processing and see for like interesting occurrences or if it has exceeds a certain threshold, certain threshold, or if it's going to uh, going to a predefined trend or etc. Then, based on that, you can take action. So to take action, you need you will need enterprise integration capabilities as well. So so it's uh, so so uh, the streaming system should uh, be able to take care of such uh, enterprise integration capabilities to a certain extent as well. But I mean, I wouldn't say we can completely replace uh, an like enterprise integration. Uh, type of productive streaming based systems, but uh, you know, making a simple API service call or response or just sending an alert or report that data is something that streaming systems can do very easily. But if it's more complex, what you can do is you can hand over that, that heavy lifting part of integration to a product that is specifically designed to that. So, but still, the streaming, the, the fronting streaming system has to identify. What are the? I mean, identify the, the 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 identify that there has to be an action uh, for this this particular event. Uh, okay. okay, so that's what we. Uh, so that was about uh, like what uh, what is the streaming systems are. Uh, so now let uh, let me quickly go through like three uh, challenges that we very often face. When it comes to deploying, especially when deploying your streaming systems in in production, right? So, so as I explained earlier, streams carry large volumes of data, and they are flowing at very high velocities. And even in some cases, your system might get exposed to bursts, self bursts of uh, data as well. So sometimes these bursts might be caused by a network related. Issue or sometimes your business use case. For an example, in 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 Black Friday, if you are running a trade, if you are running online store in Black Friday, you will get a big burst of transactions. So if it if it results in events, so you will be you will be seeing an event, right? So so you so that one of the thing. But despite this uh, this you know the overwhelming amount of data, still the streaming systems has the. the Minima, uh, keeping latency at a minimum is very important because the whole idea of using streaming is to provide the interactive near real time or if not near, near, if not near real time experience to the user. So the streaming system has to be has to equip with uh, the equip with. Special thing we uh, the, 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 these uh, sort of like uh, what you say, I would say like um, uh, the changes uh, unexpected changes in data volume it can be mitigated through uh, tune ups in your streaming system or even even in some, sometimes you might need to re architect your I mean uh, re architect your system uh, meaning like uh, you have to get into you have to take into the account that the fact that it might be possible to get Huge bursts, and you must anticipate that, and then the architecture has to be developed to handle that. So, so that that those things have to be taken into consideration. And also, another one of the common problems that we have seen is like applying back back pressure. So, let's say your publisher is pushing really hard uh, with uh, more and more events, but after some time, if the streaming system can't consume that all that data. And if it starts to apply back pressure on the the, the the publisher, the publisher performance and publisher's function might be degraded or break. So therefore, uh, that might result in you know the, the external consume external publishers might not want to connect to your system. So so applying back so that is something that we need to be mindful. 
and uh, and also I explained earlier also the streams can be very verbose, but in many cases consumers might not require all the event for a very uh, overly simplified example would be an IoT sensor might can be emitting uh, you uh, the room temperature every five seconds, but uh, for a real use case you might uh, you might not need that you might need the average temp average uh, temperature for let's say 30 seconds so therefore these uh, we have to take into consideration that if we really if we, if we should really pass on all this uh, data back to the user or should we aggregate or summarize at the streaming system itself and then add more value onto that and then pass that onto the information so that things has to be considered while uh, designing and while taking the design distance of your system right. and then the scalability <laughs> so so i mean i think we all agree about the fact that you know not just a streaming system that any any system has to it should be possible to scale horizontally as the system integrated with uh, more and more systems but in the streaming case and more and more data sources and also some data sources might push more traffic over time so 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 uh, so that means that you, your system, I mean, as your business grow, as your use cases grow, the system, the requirements will also grow. Uh, so, but uh, in streaming based uh, processing logics, there are like two types of processing. So one is uh, like state less use cases and one are other, other type of use cases are stateful. So let me explain that in a uh, little. So stateless use cases means you don't need to have prior knowledge. You don't need to store prior knowledge about the events that had arrived early, right? So for an example, if you are doing a simple filter, okay, I would like to pass on all the events that have the uh, transaction volume more than 100. So that is stateless, right? So, so that such use cases are very easy to scale. So you can just keep adding nodes and just send the data in round robin manner to different nodes. So because it just it only depends on that event itself, so it can be passed on. I mean, they can be scaled very easily. But the stateful use cases are a little different. So uh, the, I mean, this is not to be like uh, uh, confused with the fact that the streams are discrete events. So uh, so streams uh, sorry events are discrete units. So uh, so uh, the fact that uh, so events are discrete units, so they have a value and they, so they have a meaning for themselves. But some use cases might require you to uh, combine a few of these events together and uh, calculate certain value. For an example, let's say you want to calculate the average, uh, let's say response. Uh, you are getting an uh, event stream telling you about the response time of an API. So you need to calculate, okay, what was my average response time over the last one hour, right? So how do you do that? So in order to do that, you need to uh, consider the values that will be sent by other uh, events as well. So now you are calculating a, some sort of a, a global variable, right? So I, I, I would not say like it's a directly mapped to a global, but uh, it's, it's somewhat similar, right? So you are now calculating a value that is based uh, for, uh, uh, based on based on several events rather than just single event. So such stateful cases we are somewhat hard to scale. So for next, I mean, uh, if it's like data parts, I mean, if you can partition the data, so then again, you can uh, uh, use parallel processing and uh, then scale. So meaning for an example, let's say you are, you are getting a, a, a stream of stock trades, right? And then you only consider, you only calculate this value based on uh, per symbol. Uh, for an example, you calculate the average price for Google separately, Amazon separately, Apple separately, right? So these, so therefore, what you can do is you can partition that data and then spread the the the, the balance the the traffic across different nodes. So let Google be handled by one container, we let uh, uh, Apple be handled by another container, etc. So that that way you can scale. But even in some cases, you sometimes you there are some cases. Of course, you need to calculate. Uh, global calculations as well. They are they are can be used cases for for such cases. Sometimes you need to go and tap into the database, and we will incur latency. But then again, we have to keep it to a minimum. So so it's a little tricky. So so uh, so I just want to you know highlight that fact. So when you are 
thinking about the scalability think you have to think in terms of what is the nature of my use case right so so yeah so that's fine and the other uh, fact that uh, another challenge i want to have is the resilience and high availability so uh, so streaming systems uh, should be an uh, designed to handle like consume large tps um, so and it has to be graceful as well so if your streaming system gets freezed for a couple of minutes and then you uh, lose uh, events worth a couple of minutes so then it might you, are, you might be losing valuable information right so so i mean even in some cases uh, minutes unavailability can lose like millions of events so one of the common techniques that people do, do is we keep a hot backup to take over instantly but then again when you are taking over let's say the primary failed and the hot backup is taking over how do we make sure that the, the hot backup is taking over from the point that primary left or taking over from a point uh, uh, before the primary left right you can i mean to make sure that there's no data loss right um, so uh, so, so to do, to, uh, there are certain. I mean, we can use uh, techniques like checkpointing to facilitate, you know, uh, to inst uh, facilitate resuming from the places where we left. So there are uh, uh, certain techniques that you can employ, but uh, this has to be used uh, with consciousness. Uh, so and, uh, because they will also uh, add complexity or uh, complexity to your deployment as well as some performance overhead. Overhead. So these are like few things that we need to cover. So, and another important point that I want to make is like at least once guarantee should be provided unless, I mean, you can't really uh, uh, use it in a production. So there can be like certain use cases like processing IoT sensor data or like let's say click, uh, if you are processing a click stream. So you might be able, to, there are there can be very limited amount of uses where you can afford to uh, lose a couple of events but in many cases you want to have all of your data so so at least once delivery has to be uh, provided in many cases but uh, we also we have to realize the fact that exactly once is really hard if not impossible so so uh, maybe the streaming itself, system itself might not be able to provide the exactly once uh, guarantee rather uh, your applications also has to be designed in a way such that it will should it can deduplicate and it can be asked for uh, or re, uh, replace etc. So, so those are like uh, uh, so when it comes to resilience and high available, these are the points that I would like to uh, make. Okay. Um, so before we like move on to the decision, uh, is there anything uh, that that we need to discuss or shall we move on? Right. Okay. Um, so now uh, we discussed uh, about the the the, the so uh, challenges of streaming systems as well as like what is a streaming system. So we try to uh, describe what is a streaming system. So now let's see like uh, what are the technologies that is commonly used in streaming systems. So. The, the list that I'm going to mention here is like by no means a comprehensive complete list, but this comprise of the most essential parts or the components that you see in many cases uh, in a streaming based integration system. Okay. So, so the first one is uh, real time data extraction. So I think as I explained before, so uh, the data can be uh, so there can be sources that is pushing streams of data actively into uh, your streaming system, but uh, we can't uh, you know deny or we can't uh, forget the fact that there there will be systems who will be uh, persisting data into DBs or files. So, but uh, regardless of the nature of the the, the, the source, we should be uh, able to generate. Uh, I mean, treat all these sources as streams of events right so 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 how do we do that is with real time data extraction uh, so for dbs i think uh, you might be aware about change data capture right so change data capture is a technique that is uh, used to capture changes to dbs in real time 
So this is not actually like uh, falling into the DB itself. So it, but rather what it does is it looks at the change log and then generate a stream out of that. Okay, now this insert had happened. Now this row has been deleted. This row, this, this column has been updated. Likewise, so this change data capture, sorry, excuse me, uh, can let you know changes to data happening in a DB in real time. So, uh, so that is one 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 of the common and very popular techniques that techniques that is being used. And also about files. So file scraping can be used to capture changes in files. So, but uh, in files, the, the the case is a little different and little difficult because uh, of course in file it's really hard to find updates or delete. Rather, but you can see you can capture the addition. All right. So with the proper streaming. Uh, uh, use of streaming technologies, you can actually uh, read an ever-growing file in a streaming manner without even considering the size of the file. So it can just stream the file line by line, uh, and it, as the, li the, the the file grows, it can. Uh, there are uh, tools that can tell you, okay, this there has been a line added, uh, like so. So that uh, so that sort of uh, technologies can be techniques can be used to scrape the files. Okay. So, so the more the important thing is that so when we employ these techniques with uh, with proper tools, what happens is then these uh, the, 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 the the data that is written to a passive data store such as a DB or a file becomes a dynamic stream, right? So that opens up a world of possibilities. Like then you can uh, then you can apply stream processing into get uh, various insights into that and generate alerts, etc. So it's not not anymore just some some value sitting on a db rather now it's a flowing stream which uh, gives you a lot of opportunities to uh, add value to your use cases uh, and also uh, this real time data extraction lets you modernize your legacy systems right so so uh, i mean you uh, for an example let's say you have this uh, trading uh, application which writes uh, which uh, writes its outputs only to the db so now you want to find a way to okay uh, to keep up with the computer i know you want to find a way to send these updates in real time to your mobile app that has been newly developed but how do you do that so in order to do something like that you can use this real time data extraction for a db uh, to be specific you can use change data capture and stream that changes to the mobile application as a order book update stream okay? and then stream processing so so now uh, we talked about uh, treating all data sources as stream so in streaming based in streaming based integrations you should you should be able to stream all your uh, data sources as stream so now once this data is made available as streams you need to be able to process them. So how do we process that? So in order to process that, we can we have to and we can use stream processing, right? So stream processing is a, a like a, a, a lets you process your data in real time on the fly. So on the fly means you can do many calculations in memory without persisting into a DBO file. So what happens if you process them after uh, persisting them into DBO file is that it will add more latency. So which is uh, not, uh, which might not give you the exact result that you are expect expecting out of using a stream-based system. So, so there are like uh, six main uh, ways in which you can process the stream. So one is transform, right? For an example, uh, let's say there's this uh, uh, particular source that sends you data in XML, but your application wants it in JSON. So you, you, a stream processor can consume this XML stream and then transform it to JSON and then send it back. And uh, the second one is enrich. Enrich means you add more value. For an example, you get a stream of uh, events which consists of only metadata. You need to add more information to that, uh, maybe by calling into a service or maybe in some cases tapping into a DB and then uh, make that metadata and turn it into information that is consumable and then pass it. And then comes filtering and or cleansing. So it can be a simple filter that is looking at uh, uh, maybe looking at a simple value and then drop uh, or I mean drop that event 
or rather it can be something complex as well. For an example, if you want to be GDPR compliant, you might need to you might need to uh, filter out certain personally identifi person identifiable data. So that is that sort of uh, processing can be done using stream processing. And then one of the most important things is summarizing. So this summarizing, or sometimes we call it as aggregating of aggregation of data, is uh, is uh, ha is has to be done in memory in stream processing. So, and also this this summarization my aggregations are based are temporal meaning uh, for an example let's say uh, i i can in stream processing i can tell the stream processing engine to calculate okay tell give me the average price for last five minutes starting from now so that means that you are calculating the average price for a sliding window right so that now keeps changing so that that average has to keep updating, right? As we go on, as the stream flows through this, uh, flows through time, flow, that average has to keep changing. So that sort of calculations can be done in real time uh, using stream processing. And then, of course, you can analyze the data. So we can uh, employ techniques such as complex event processing. So you know what complex event processing is. Uh, so complex event processing lets you uh, look at trends or like let you detect patterns, etc. And then, of course, you can correlate multiple events, uh, multiple streams. So you might be getting a user data stream, and also you might be getting, a, I would say, uh, some uh, stream that is related to that can be correlated with the user data. And then these correlations can be done um, in the on the fly, uh, on memory itself, and then pass it as an aggregated stream to the downstream consumers. So making it more consumable so that's why the, so so streams are often verbose so we need to employ stream processing apply these uh, ways of processing data and then add value and transform and make it consumable to the end user so that's where stream processing comes into the picture in stream processing streaming based integration system so so i, I was also i would like to also highlight the fact that so uh, the ws streaming integrator that is being shipped uh, with the enterprise integrator uh, uh, integrator product is uh, also a more of a stream processing engine. So this is powered by a CDIO and open source uh, stream processing engine. Um, so yeah, so and then the event brokers. So now, uh, okay, so we have sources now, let's, uh, so up to now, in the previous slides we discussed about, okay, we can consume streams, we can generate streams, now we can process streams. So, but then how do we pass this information across different components, right? So one of the most obvious ways is to have point to point connections, but it is not scalable, right? So this is where these event brokers or even backbones or message brokers come into the play. So uh, the most popular broker, of course, is Apache Kafka. So the, these event brokers act as a act as I would say a central uh, back uh, a central bus of bus, which le uh, lets uh, publishers publish their events and consumers consume their events. So. Here, what happens is the publishers will come. They will generate. If we use the Kafka terminology, they will create topic. For an example, in this example, the market gateway can be a publisher. It can generate trade events, right? So this it will create the topic called trade events in the event broker, and then any consumer uh, can come and subscribe to that topic and get that information. So again, there can be another publisher. Uh, who's publishing to another topic. So these consumers can uh, subscribe to all the subset of topics and then build their business logic out of them. So it, also these brokers, like they are not just merely passing uh, events uh, between the so publishers and subscribers. They also facilitate effective communication. The effective communication sometimes uh, uh, they allow data to be partitioned. They they also allow guarantee. They they facilitate uh, guarantees in uh, even delivery, etc. So they they provide very uh, useful <coughs> useful uh, uh, features uh, that uh, uh, lets these uh, publishers and consumers uh, communicate effectively. Right. All right. And then uh, the last one is about streaming APIs. So this streaming APIs also is 
something that is that was like coming into the picture over last uh, uh, five years or something. For an example, like uh, now we know the Salesforce only used to have this bulk APIs and you know this API that works on demand, right? So now they also have an API called a CDC API, the Change Data Capture, which essentially streams the changes. So likewise, there are now a lot of uh, a lot of uh, applications are exposing themselves as streaming API, it's not just endpoints. So the different, bit, so uh, the, an endpoint will just keep pushing events, but an API is a managed API. So you might need to get a value token into that and you might need to subscribe. And you know, there there's another process that you have to get through uh, in order to connect to the API. So rather than, you know, connecting a stream, consuming a stream, now you are, you are consuming an API, which is a streaming API. So, uh, so in the, traditionally, the, I mean the, the term API, uh, it, it, a normal API would for a one request you will get one response, but in a streaming API for a one request you will get many events or many responses. So if we think about the technical details, so web sockets and this gRPC streaming. So uh, gRPC streaming sort of uh, technologies. Let's make this communication possible. So you can make a single connection, keep it for a little while, or at least give the impression that it's been there, I mean, uh, for a little while, and then you can uh, make one request and get many responses. Uh, and also, uh, maybe you are aware about Async API and this GraphQL subscription. So they are, this Async API is actually like a swagger-like uh, standard that, that is coming up for streaming-based API. And, um, APS and this GraphQL subscriptions lets you like uh, subscribe to data uh, so, uh, uh, data items uh, and get let you get incremental updates uh, via uh, GraphQL as well. So so this this uh, so what I want to highlight is that now these uh, standards and these implementations are becoming popular and becoming coming into the the, the systems uh, due to the usage of streaming API. Right. So, so these are uh, so uh, so far. I've talked about this, uh, this, this streaming APIs, uh, etc. Uh, so the, the technologies that is being used. So now let me quickly go through some of the features that are very good or very good to have in your streaming based system. So, so monitoring is uh, of course um, for any any system monitoring is uh, very important. But in streaming based systems, it is. Uh, it can, I would say, like it is, uh, it, it, it is more uh, crucial uh, as, as you have to handle with a lot of uh, granular events, right? So, so, so having a proper end to end monitoring lets you like understand the system behavior to see, okay, if my system had consumed too much CPU, or has it been sitting over uh, under 80% CPU, or was it all, all the, I mean, how long was it like using CPU very heavily, likewise? Um, so that will uh, let you get a clear idea about okay under the load under production how is my system be it tend to is is there imminent failure that I'm looking at or is my system doing all right so that sort of idea you can get um, and um, and also uh, so a well uh, organized monitoring system will not just give you a couple of stats rather it will have a hierarchical uh, view. So users at different levels might be interested in different uh, step, right? I mean, so for an example, a DevOps user might only be interested about if the if the data has been passed or if there's error or not. So he might not be able, not be interested about the fact uh, if uh, a particular uh, even uh, the latency is uh, too much or uh, if this particular application is working fine. So I mean, so they are uh, the, the, based on the type nature of the user the the, the 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 interest can be different so there has the, the the monitoring system should be uh, providing stats for different levels so that different users can uh, uh, have the we uh, have a view on the system and get a get a better understanding uh, for their work um, and also uh, monitoring uh, enables you to profile the data sources and things connected to the system so 
So that is also very important because like for an example, let's say your system is connected to three data sources, um, uh, but what you see at your server is okay, my CPU is spinning up, but you really don't know what makes it, what, what, how, why does it happen? So uh, maybe it is that one of the, 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 the sources are pushing data very hard, or one of the consumers are very slow. So I have to handle a lot of, uh, accumulate a lot of data in the server. So that sort of information you can get and uh, get by, by having a proper monitoring. So which in turn lets you do proper capacity planning and op proper capacity planning to have allocate uh, adequate resources, as well as if you have uh, allocated more resources than it requires, you can optimize it. So that is uh, monitoring. And tooling is also, uh, again, uh, uh, for streaming based systems, like, so, uh, so th there are uh, like different uh, types of users, right? So because streaming based integrations uh, uh, overlaps with uh, data integration as well. So you might have heard about the term streaming ETL. So that is uh, like coming up as a, like an alternative traditional ETL. So, so I mean, there, uh, what I'm trying to highlight is like, there are different types of users who are dealing with this, uh, ca can come into the picture when it comes to streaming based system. So, so there can be business users who might like to write, mm, you might, who might not like to write any code or just have a low code editor or rather have a step-by-step -step wizard to configure the data flow or the integration flow. Or there can be users who are with the software development background. They might write, they might prefer, okay, I'm more comfortable in writing the code and building my logic. So that way I have more, con more control over that. So there might be users like that. And then again, people like data scientists and who are, fa who are like more familiar with DBs and, you know, crunching data with queries, et cetera, might like to write their logic in queries. So, so it's just like, so, so there can be different types of, uh, uh, if your tooling can offer uh, like different ways uh, of developing logic, so that can be very convenient. Right? And also, uh, uh, before you uh, go and place your uh, streaming logic in production, you need to do proper testing, right? So uh, for an example, let's say you are writing a logic based on uh, a stream that is being sent by your trading system, right? Okay. So, I mean, before, in order to validate that, I mean, you, if it takes you to go and connect to the, uh, the actual test bed of the trading system, I mean, it might be a too, it might be too much of a burden, right? To, to, to test your logic, et cetera. So rather, if your tooling lets you simulate these streams and simulate the loads and see how your logic is doing and if it is going, if it is doing the, the things that you have intended to do, etc. So that will be very helpful. So that way, so tooling has to be equipped with uh, features like that as well. And then uh, the other uh, important thing is like error identification and mitigation. So error, so, so as I said, so because tooling uh, can be sending, uh, so sorry, the streams can be sending a lot of events uh, per second. So there you might, if there's no proper error identification and mitigation system, you might lose data even without be noticed, right? So there are several places uh, that uh, these errors can occur. So one might be the data is not received in the expected format or it, the receiver, we are, we, the streaming system might not be publishing data in the expected format or the receiver can be unavailable. Or then again, there can be an error in your processing logic. So these type, I mean, there can be other types of the errors as well. So, but the idea is that, so you should be able to identify, okay, there has been error. So you should be able to go and check, okay, if there has been error, okay, then let me see what has happened and let me try to mitigate it, right? So certain errors, you might be able to uh, uh, automate the recovery process. For an example, let's say the receiver was unavailable. Maybe you can set up, uh, you can set up a retry uh, task to reason that data. But there can be uh, certain errors which might require user intervention as well, right? For an example, let's say the, the mapping is, the map, the data is not coming in the expected format. So you, uh, 
then that that data that event might get dropped right so so you should be able to see okay this event has been dropped and this is the payload that has been received so let me uh, see if i need to change the logic of my app or if i should like replay this event etc so that facilities has to be provided right uh, okay so that's uh, about the, the what i have to share so uh, in order to like demonstrate what I've been explaining, I have been I've set up, I've done a set up a quick demo to cover some of the aspects that we discussed here. So before we move on to demo, is there anything? Uh, oh, shall we just move on to demo? Okay. Uh, so sorry, let's I had a move question. Yeah. Hi, uh, Joshi here. I had a question. Uh, so, in terms of uh, authenticating the consumer of a particular stream, is that a function of the streaming service or is that a function of the application architecture? Yeah, uh, so Yoshi, I think uh, so that's where the streaming APIs come into the play. So, so you want to provide like a uh, uh, control the uh, access to your uh, stream, right? So therefore, uh, so that's where if you can, uh, you uh, bring in the concept of streaming APIs, maybe uh, I would say the best way is to bring in some uh, API gateway in the middle and then let the API gateway proxy that stream uh, between the, the end consumer and the streaming system. Did I answer the question or? Yep, yep, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me quickly go to demo. So yeah, so this is the demo setup. So so I would say like this is just a, like a very uh, thin slice of uh, thin cross section of a streaming system that you might come across. Uh, so I didn't want to actually add the, the gateway because it might become overly complex. So so here I'm using the WS2 streaming integrator as a stream processing engine, and also Apache Kafka as the 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 the, the event broker. Right? So let me try to explain the, the scenario that I'm trying to demonstrate here. So there, so let's say there's this legacy trading application, which writes it orders into a order books that is being uh, written into DB. So here, what we are doing is we are using change data capture source events out of that. And then let's say there's this market data gateway, which pushes market inform data information to the uh to the uh to the streaming integrator so what streaming integrator do here is it will do some processing add more value into that and then publish it to the apache kafka so it will be consumed by a trading what's to a web application so, uh, so just like if I uh, so elaborate more, so I mean, this is an unsecure uh, consumer. So if you need to make it consumer, secure, you might need to put a uh, API gateway in between. Right. Okay, uh, so let me do the demo very quickly. Right. Okay, hope. Uh, okay. Let me share my whole screen. Okay, let me share my whole screen. Uh, okay, hope you guys can see. Okay. So now, uh, so let's say there's this order book. Uh, the, uh, so this is let's say this is the this is my this is MySQL. So let me. Um, okay. So now let's say this is a. Order book. So let me clear this uh, uh, to make it more clear. Uh, is there a way to kind of um, access 
maximize the uh, font size. Oh, uh, let me see. Yeah, that should be. Is it good enough? Or? Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think now it's okay. Cool. So okay, now, now let me start over. So 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 what I'm trying to demonstrate here is now. Uh, let's say this is the MySQL server of the trading application. So and let's say this trading application is uh, this legacy trading application is inserting uh, orders into its tables as and when it gets uh, orders from the, the the end user, right? From the end user. So uh, let me uh, yeah. So this is an order. Let's say I want to show that uh, information in this uh, web application. So how do we do that, right? So yeah. So let me insert the event here. So this is so I'm so in order to simulate the legacy application, I'll just do an insert query. So now here I'm inserting an order here, right? So but so now you can see. A insert query that is being done to the DB is being propagated all the way to this web application as an event in real time, right? So this is made available. This is done by using change data capture, which is a streaming technology to stream data changes of a DB. So I mean, if it if it is on a stream, this this uh, technique. It would be like really hard to give this experience, right? So, so now we have sent. So let me send another order as well. Let's make it a cell, and I'll just place it, right? So now you can see. So that that order is also being placed. So so yeah. So I I just want to highlight the fact that so these inserts, these writes into DB are now converted into events and propagated all the way to the front end of a web application, which is an interactive application consumed by the end user right so that is so that way you can uh, use real day, real time data extraction to do that right and then let's say there's this other uh, HTT, uh, so in our scenario i explained that there will be another uh, uh, so uh, let me emulate this part as well so this is market data gateway which sends data in uh, data in uh, different uh, uh, in HTTP using JSON. So I'll use curl for that, a curl command, a simple curl command for that, right? Okay. So um, let me check what are the uh, three and four. So I have placed uh, order ID three and four using inserts. Now let me do a trade. Uh, three and four, right? So now I'm changing this. I send this trade, right? I send this trade. Now, if you see the order book, so we can see that this, 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 the sell order and buy order has been matched, and then these orders are removed. So, so, and the, another important fact is like now this trade has been passed on to Kafka and consumed by a con console Kafka consumer. Okay. So now, if you can see, so we can see that. So, uh, so what in the in in the trade, what we are just sending the symbol, volume, current price, and the sell load ID and the buy load ID. So, but in the end stream, we can see, okay, it has calculated the value, and it has calculated the tip. If it's a uh, increase of the price compared to the last trade, or if it's a decrease of the price. So this is actually, of course, this is overly simplified. Example, but you can do many other calculations and enrich your stream and then publish. So, again, the 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 the, the uh, event that is being sent over HTTP is being published to Kafka and then it's consumed by a Kafka consumer. And uh, um, then from that point onwards, you can use it to uh, use it for anything. So, um, and also, uh, let me quickly touch upon the fact that the, on the monitoring. So, so, yeah. So this is so, uh, so uh, this application actually. So these are the 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 the, the, 
the function that I just demoed was in, implemented using two CD applications in WSL streaming integrator. One is order book event sourcing app and other one is trade event sourcing app. So here uh, we can see that, okay, the order book event sourcing app and the trade event sourcing app. So let's go into the order book event sourcing app. So if you go there, it will say, okay, there are a total 20 inputs. And because we use change data capture here, when we go down further, we can see, okay, uh, okay, there has been like, uh, yeah, 20 total changes. And so actually these changes are with the changes that I've done in my prior testing as well. So, but, so, and it will say, okay, the last uh, change was at 1.30 PM, August 26th. And so it will give you very useful information, right? So if you, you can, you can drill down further and say, okay, how many inserts were there? How many deletes were there? And what was the idle time and, you know, so, so this this level of monitoring um, lets you uh, see okay what has really happened, right? Uh, so and then further optimize as I explained, then take decisions based on these steps. Uh, and then let me quickly demonstrate the fact how how impo important that the error handling can be. Okay, for this curl, for the sake of example, let's say now your current price is a float, right? It's a float. So we let's say there's this uh, system, one system uh, that sends an trailing F, right? Which you don't expect. You you build your logic be thinking about think uh, assuming that they are it will it will not have this F, right? So when you send that, so what will happen is your logic will fail, right? So there might be only a few trades that that has this trailing it. So, but you, if you, it might go unnoticed, right? So, so how do you handle such situations? So, in order to do, do that in WS streaming, to get what we have in this, we have something called uh, Let me restart it. So let me uh, go to the error storage. You know? So let me connect to the server that is uh, which runs this uh, applications. Okay. So it says one error found. So it's in the trade even sourcing app because we uh, we send this through HTTP. So let's fetch that. So if you go to detail information, so now you see, okay, now this is the error that is being sent. And so this is the payload that was there. So now, because I know the, because I know, okay, this, I, this error occurred because I'm sending this additional error. Uh, I know that, but after some debugging in real in a real situation, you should be able to find, okay, what has gone wrong. Let's say you come to the conclusion of if that is F, then what I can simply do is without losing this data element, we, I can just simply delete this F or do the next of the changes in your case, and then replay with them. So that way that error is mitigated and your data is not a single event is lost. So, uh, so yeah, so they are, uh, so this, uh, that's the, uh, the, the use of like error identification and mitigation in a uh, streaming based system. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show for the day. Like uh, I would like to take up on any questions or any, any discussion points.
Okay, so... I, yeah. think we're good. I have one question, Abhijit again. Uh, yeah, it's we, we did we did talk about uh, having high volumes of streaming data earlier. So, yeah. in, in in your experience, what is the kind of volumes that you've seen that are really high? Uh, and yeah. What uh, what scenario can you give us a give us a use case? Yeah, so so actually, uh, so there are, uh, I mean, I can't tell you the customer names, but there are like so in telecommunication uh, uh, industry, I mean, we have seen like uh, events that uh, might go 100 up to 200,000 per second. Uh, and also in trading, uh, we have like customers who have like uh, gone up to more than 100, touching upon the 100,000 level. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so these are the, like the upper limits that we have seen. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and in terms of uh, performance, so what are the challenges you face when you deal with these kind of volumes? Yeah, so, so yeah, so many, one of the common problem is that, common problem is that, uh, like uh, as I said, like some use cases are sometimes stream uh, stateful. So in such cases, it's really hard to scale. So for for in order to like handle that use cases, what we most often do is like we we then we have to uh, uh, use DBs in middle of these event calls. So in such cases, what happens is. Most of the time, this DB adds latency. So, in order to mitigate that, we'll have to uh, like uh, use uh, te techniques such as caching, and then of course optimize the, the 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 server performance of the DB to the optimal level, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, most cases, uh, in 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 high performance cases, we most of the time we recommend to use uh, even backbone such as Kafka, so because they can like uh, gracefully handle the back pressure. Um, so a, a processing engine itself might not be able to handle that uh, that uh, the, this very huge volume unless you run like I mean if your use case is stateless of course you can like uh, have any number of nodes and randomly uh, distribute the load and then scale but if your if your processing logic is stateful probably going through uh, having a, a ba even backbone such as Kafka or Nets will be really helpful uh, yeah, for you to, to have a sustainable uh, deployment. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sajid, other than integrator, okay. Is this AWS2 still on Synapse yeah. only? Or uh, I think, uh, Couple of years back, we were announced to go out of Synapse. So is this still? I'm coming in WSO2 fold after a long time. I used okay. to run a program on WSO2. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that time I uh, I was running project like for Ericsson etc. And then I was oh. interacting with Achala etc. Uh, those mm -hmm. those days. Okay. Oh, I see. So, okay, so. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, that time uh, when integrator uh, was announced, right? At the same time it was announced, we, are, we will go out of Synapse. Okay, we are going to introduce something, our own framework. Is this still there on card or we already st still on Synapse? Yeah, uh, so Santosh, actually uh, we are still on Synapse. So so, so I, what you said was correct. So previously we said, okay, we are like, going all out. Uh, uh, only on uh, another technology called Ballerina, then we are leaving. Ballerina, so, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, but now uh, the strategy is like more like okay. So for uh, people who like like config based and low code type of uh, uh, integration, so you can still use Synapse. So of course we are we've done a, we are doing a release in like a couple of days time of Synapse uh, streaming enterprise integrator seven one zero. So it's not out of the picture. It's very much alive, and and we are still actively selling it to customers. So because that time, if I heard that time timeline, we were, I'm talking this in 2016, I believe it was announced by yeah. Irina, right? And yeah. we are in 2020 now. I think it was supposed to roll out in two years. Okay. 
Uh, that time I used to sell uh, WSO technology to customers. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm coming <laughs> back again in WSO yeah. to see alliances. Okay. <laughs> Have to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Ballerina will also with uh, yeah. So Ballerina is like uh, I mean it is being released. Uh, and there will be another major release which will be happening on the next uh, year. But at the beginning of the next year, so that will also be announced. But that really doesn't mean that okay, synapse will go away or like yeah. So it's just it will stay like you know side by side. Yeah, because only WSO two has been left on synapse and axis. Otherwise, uh, almost all products are out of. Uh, rather, nobody was on synapse other than WSO two. <laughs> uh, and uh, now, uh, which earlier we used to have a different different product, right? Uh, that has been merged together, right, uh, with the integrator. Uh, so yes. we are we are no more uh, installing AM separately. Then A separately, so we, we don't need to do that uh, anymore. Is that correct? Mm. Yes. So now we actually have like only uh, three main products. Uh, so that is the enterprise integrator. Uh, the API manager and the IS, IAM. So actually, the enterprise integrator is like a collection of products, uh, Santosh. So we have uh, the, 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 actually, uh, we have the BPS in that. And um, actually, we used to have a message broker, but we are now actively proposing uh, RabbitMQ instead of the, the, the WS2 message broker. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the Synapse integration runtime. And also, we, uh, you might be aware about the WSO2 stream processor. So that is also being brought into Enterprise Integrator under the tag name uh, Streaming Integrator. So that's what I use for the demo. OK, perfect. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks, uh, uh, Sajid. Thanks, Andres. Thanks for coming. Okay. Uh, shall we wrap up? Yeah, I think we can uh, wrap up. Thanks. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So, that's it. Yeah, bye. Bye.